Okay, welcome back everyone to our second lecture, BC 308. Uh, we are in Daniel chapter 12. Um, I just changed my headset. The other one kind of off. Right, Daniel chapter 12. Uh, we are going to go through this verse by verse. Verse 1. Uh, we are seeing Michael, the great friends who stands watch over the sons of your people so this is one of the key verses that tells us that michael is the prince of israel the michael the archangel has been assigned to the prince or uh, assigned to israel or uh, uh, i don't know people say the guardian angel the, the the ruling angel over israel as a nation so and he says, this great prince who stands watch for the sons of your people. And notice that these angels are referred to as princes. Prince, the prince of Persia, the prince of Greece. And here Michael is the prince of Israel. The, the ruler, the spiritual ruler uh, over Israel. And then he says, uh, verse 1, There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time, and at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who's found written in the book. So this is referred to as the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, so that's why he says, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. That means like you've never seen this kind of trouble. And you find, and, and this, so this is, referring specifically to the second half of the tribulation. So the, the seven years of tribulation are bad times. But the second half of the tribulation is the great tribulation, or it's a time of great trouble. Right? So it's also what Jesus referred to in Matthew 24, when he said, Jesus also makes the statement in Matthew 24. And he says, um, uh, she takes that first. Um, verse 21, Matthew 24, 29, for then there shall be great tribulation, such as not seen, been seen since the beginning of the world. Right? So Jesus calls it the great tribulation. This is the second half of the tribulation. So referred to as time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, he says it is so going to be such trouble. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. So God is going to divinely protect the people of Israel. Uh, and we will see this in Revelation 12, when, when this great dragon and Satan is cast down from heaven in the middle of the seven years. He knows only he has only three and a half years left. He knows his time is short. And so he goes with great vengeance against the woman that is Israel, so parallels here. But God supernaturally protects the people. Okay? So at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. So whose names are written in the book? Those who believe in Jesus, their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right? Those who believe. So. We can connect this very nicely with Revelation 12. We will see this. And if, you, if, you, if you turn there to Revelation 12, it, it is talking about um, those who have the testimony of the Lord Jesus. If you look there, Revelation 12, um, it says here, you know, um, uh, verse 13 through 17, uh, I look at verse 17 specifically, and the dragon was enraged with the woman, Revelation 12, 17, the woman representing Israel. He went to make war with the rest of her offspring, all the Jewish people, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So not, so yeah, he's against Jewish people in general, but specifically those who are following Jesus Christ. And that ties in exactly with what we read here, Daniel 12, 1, the end of that. Everyone who's found written in the book. 
And these are people believing, believing in Jesus Christ. Those are the testimony of Jesus. So it's going to be an intense time, a time of Jacob's trouble, great trouble for people of Israel, but especially for those who believe in Jesus. But God is going to divinely protect them. Verse 2. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting in death. So people who die, there's going to be a resurrection coming. And, and, and uh, uh, this has been you know, revealed to die that annual. People who die are going to rise up. There's going to be this resurrection. And some are going to go to everlasting life, everlasting in death. So that we will see, yeah, Revelation positions that for us at the end of the millennium. Verse 3, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever. So those who turn people to righteousness, who are turning people to God, to the truth, they are the ones who are going to be shining like stars, meaning they're the ones who are going to see great reward and see great honor in that kingdom. Right? Those who are serving God, turning others to righteousness, they're going to see great honor in the kingdom to come. Verse 4. But you, Daniel, Shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So, angels telling Daniel, Daniel, okay, you've got all these, I've given you all this revelation, I've given you all the prophetic understanding, and you, you put these words down, you keep it, because it's for the end times. Right? So, it's not for Daniel's time. Daniel was given the revelation, but it's for the end time. And then he gives one sign of the end time. Many will run to and fro. And still are going to be running to and fro. It's going to be what we understand is in so much increased travel. People are moving all over the world. And knowledge shall increase. So both there's going to be increased travel and knowledge will increase. So we see this sign fulfilled. People are running to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So this is another sign of the end times, which we will, you know, we we recognize, we recognize in the times in which we live, there is so much of travel and there's so much increase in knowledge. Verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank, the other on that river bank, on either side of the river. I once said to the man, who looked clothed with linen, was above the waters of the river, how long will be the fulfillment of these wondrous people? So it's very interesting that in verses 5 and 6, God is revealing something to Daniel as part of a conversation between two beings. Now we, he, he assumed that these were angelic beings. But Daniel is seeing a vision. There's a river flowing, the two beings talking to each other. And they're asking a question, which probably is the question in Daniel's mind. You know, when is all this going to happen? How long is it going to take to happen, etc.? So he's had, seeing this as a conversation. And then he's hearing one person who was above the waters of the river. When he held up his right hand, his left to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever, this is verse 7, that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. Remember, we have already seen this. Time, times, half a time. One plus two plus half, three and a half years. When the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be fixed. So that three and a half years, the second half of the tribulation, is what is being referenced here. So when in verse 1, when he said, 
you know, there will be such trouble as was never was. He's specifically talking about this three and a half year period. And he's saying that the power of God's people, the holy people, is going to be so crushed. The power of the holy people, God's people, specifically Jewish people, specifically those who believe in Jesus, they're going to be so crushed. But it's going to be very hard, very difficult, very troublous times. Verse 8. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? So Daniel is hearing. He didn't understand. So he's asking a question. What shall be the end of these things? Then he hears the angel speak to him and says, verse 9, Daniel, go your way. The words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So all the angel is saying is, look, this all has to do with the time of the end. It's not in your time. You're not going to see it. You're not going to understand it. It's about the end time, the time of the end. Verse 10, Mary will be purified, made white and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise will understand. So, verse 10, there is going to be two sides. There are going to be people who will be purified, made white and refined. There will be people who will be saved. But the wicked will do wickedly. They just, they won't understand. And that's what we actually see in the book of Revelation. As we journey through the book of Revelation, which we will do, you will find that in the tribulation, there will be people who will repent and turn to God and become martyrs. But there will also be people who get angry with God, who will speak against God, and they'll continue doing evil things. So you'll have both kinds of things. You'll see this. We will see this in the book of Revelation. During the tribulation, people are going to, you know, Either go this side or go this side. No in between. They're going to be purified, made white. They're going to stand for Jesus. They're going to die for Jesus. And then there are the other people who are going to totally turn against God. Verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, that is, middle of the tribulation, right? Remember, this Antichrist comes for seven years. We have already seen that in the middle of the seven years, he will stop the sacrifices. He will break his covenant. So from that time, the daily sacrifice taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up. That means this Antichrist, abomination of desolation, he read in Daniel chapter 9, this Antichrist, he sets himself up to be worshipped. That is right in the middle of the tribulation. There shall be 1,290 days. Interesting. So why? Because previously we have said, it, he said 1,260 days or three and a half years. Now it is 30 days extra. He's giving additional 30 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,000 335 days. So another 45 days. Okay. So 30 days. That's 1290 plus 1335, another 45 days. So really, we're talking about. 40%, another 75 days extra. But go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. So this is a little, you know, unknown to us, meaning we know there is going to be the second three and a half years, and then the Battle of Armageddon will happen. But now, this angel is telling Daniel, he's talking about another 30 plus 45 days. He's saying, after these days, uh, things will change. Which is 
righteousness would be restored and you know, the, the kingdom would be established. Uh, because in Daniel 9, he mentions that as one of the things that will happen in Daniel 9, um, uh, verse 24, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, to anoint the most holy. That means for that to happen, everlasting righteousness, prophecy to be fulfilled, the most holy to be anointed. So there is this gap of about 30 plus 45, 75 days happening in between. Now, we don't know exactly because we don't read about that anywhere else. And so this is just a guess. So when you read some commentaries and so on, this is a guess that these 30 plus 45 days are days for that will be at the end, from the end of, the, from the battle of Armageddon, that's when the Lord Jesus comes, returns, to the resuming of the functioning of the millennial temple. That's this time period of two and a half months. Uh, sorry, yeah, two and a half months. 75 days. This is only a guess because. In Ezekiel chapters 44 to 48, we read about the, the millennial temple. The temple will function once again and throughout the millennium. So remember, the temple has been desecrated by the Antichrist in the middle of the daily sacrifice, uh, verse 11. The daily sacrifice, the abomination set up, it's been desecrated. End of the three and a half years, the Battle of Armageddon happens, which is there is total devastation. So for everything to be cleaned up and the temple to be restored to it to be anointed, to anoint the most holy place, and for it to be restored and righteousness to be established and the, everything to resume is this two and a half months, this 75 days. Um, and then there is the Millennial Temple where everything is functioning, Ezekiel 44 to 48. I just want to, as a side note, if you turn with me to Ezekiel 44. And uh, verse 44, verses 1, 2, and 3. So Ezekiel 44. Um, Ezekiel chapters 44 to 48 are talking about the millennial temple, meaning there will be this temple established and functioning. But verses 44, chapter 44, verses 1 to 3, is again a very prophetic statement because he's talking about the east gate of the sanctuary. So he says, yeah, Ezekiel 44, 1, 2, and 3. He brought me back to the outer gate of the sanctuary, which faces toward the east, but it was shut. And the Lord said to me, this gate sh shall be shut. It shall not be opened. No man shall enter by it, because the Lord God of Israel has entered by it. Therefore, it shall be shut. As for the prince, because he is the prince, he may sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the vestibule of the gate of the gateway and go out the same way. So, uh, Ezekiel 44, verses 1, 2, and 3. Many people understand this to be another prophetic fulfillment, which will happen afterwards, after the Battle of Armageddon. That is, the Lord Jesus will enter, so the east gate will be, is, will be shut. And today the east gate is shut, of the sanctuary is shut. Nobody can enter through the east side of the sanctuary. The, the Jews come in and on the west side, they pray on the western wall and they go. East side, is, the gate is shut. Has been shut now for a long time, I think 700 years. Shut. But Ezekiel 44 to 40 is talking about the millennial temple. And it says it, it will only be open for the prince. 
that he may enter by this way and go out. He'll come in and go out this way. So many Bible scholars and those who study prophecy look at this and say that this will be fulfilled by Jesus, that he will come in through this. When the Lord returns and the temple is ready, cleaned up and ready, the Lord will enter through the east gate, which right now is shut. Nobody's, nobody can enter and close, enter and go out of it. It's closed. So before this millennial temple begins its functioning, the Lord will enter in through the east gate. Okay. So going back to Daniel 12, those days that Daniel has mentioned, Again, I'm saying it's a guess. It's a what to say, an intelligent guess, right? It's not some randomly we're saying it, but we're saying that. Why is he talking about additional thirty days and additional forty-five days? Because he says one thousand two ninety days, one thousand two sixty days is three and a half years. Now he's talking about two ninety days, and it's thirty days extra. Then he says another forty-five days, one thousand three hundred and thirty-five days. So. Totally, there's two and a half month period. Why is he mentioning that? Uh, most people, scholars would say that it's probably the time taken to sanctify the place, clean out the temple, consecrate the temple, for the temple for the anoints the most holy place, and for the law to enter in through the East Gate, and for everything to be, to resume the millennial temple. So that's how we understand these these days, these num days that are mentioned here in Daniel 12. Uh, we can't substantiate it from, you know, like there is no other chapter in verse to substantiate these additional days. So that's why I'm saying it's an intelligent guess. Uh, most likely that's what it is for. And uh, then verse 13, the angel tells Daniel, and at 12, 13, but you go your way till the end. For you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. So what is beautiful in Daniel 12, while there is uh, details about the end times, there is emphasis about the resurrection and eternal life. You know? So he says, those who die, those who sleep, will be raised up. Verse 2. Verse 3, those who are turning people to righteousness, they're going to shine forever. In that, there's, there's eternity beyond this. And once again in verse 13, Daniel, you're going to die, but you will come to your eyes at the end of the days. Okay? You will see all of this. Arise to your inheritance and, and, and see all this. Okay. So with that, we come to the end of uh, the book of Daniel. Uh, very, very interesting and also amazing, amazing book in terms of Bible prophecy. Any questions on this? Please go ahead. Yeah. So, so when it's it Okay, your question has uh, to do with verse 2. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. So this matches what we read in Revelation 20, where we'll just read the scriptures because they match here. Revelation 20. So this is at the time of the great white throne judgment. So it's at the end of the thousand years. 
Okay, it's Galatians 20, verse 11 to 15. John sees the revel this revelation, John says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. I was 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Verse 13. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And even not found it in the book of life was cast to the lake of fire. So Daniel 12, verse 3, every person is raised well. They stand before the great white throne judgment. This is at the end of the thousand years, end of the millennium. They're standing with the great white throne. And some go into life, some into death, based on whether their names are in the book of life. But remember, at that time, believers are already with the Lord. We're all already separated, we're already with the Lord. But if that's the like the final judgment, it's the Lydia, please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. I had a question actually from chapter eleven, um, verse forty one. Uh, he shall also enter the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape from his hand. Uh, Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of Ammon. Um, so, um, does does this uh, do, uh, do these countries refer to uh, like modern day Jordan? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, what we see, if you if you if you also cross reference Revelation twelve, um, if you just uh, if you go to Revelation twelve, and um, and let's say uh, verse fourteen, verse four. Um, okay, let's we we'll read verse thirteen and fourteen for context. Revelation twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time, times and half a time. That is three and a half years from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed. Okay. So what I want to point out is that she might go into the wilderness to her place. That she's preserved, right? So many people uh, again. This is only uh, you know an intelligent guess, like here. So pe pe people say that uh, this wilderness. Where will this wilderness? Where could this wilderness be? Where these Jewish people are being preserved? And people point out that Jordan, which is east of Israel, the land between. Israel and Jordan, that region is really a barren land, a wilderness land. So again, people, uh, you know, people of studies, they tell us that it's very highly like it's likely that a lot of the Jewish Jewish people, in order to escape the persecution of the Antichrist, the attack of the Antichrist, will go into this region, which is Jordan, which in uh, Daniel eleven verse 41 refers to as the the prominent people of Ammon. so either moab and Ammon. so uh and the prominent people of Ammon. so that refers to the people of jordan and and that's where the uh, the jewish people would run to for safety and it's just east of israel uh so that's uh kind of a sure. correlation yeah Sure, thank you, Pastor. So, when when it says uh, the Jewish people, does it mean um, like um, the Messianic Jews or those who 
believe in Christ at, during those times, or is it the like the whole population? So um, the way we understand it is, it is all the Jews in general, but more specifically the Messianic Jews, the Jews who believe in Jesus. Uh, because like we pointed out in uh, end of Revelation 12, he says he's making war with the woman, with the rest of her offspring, that means the woman representing Israel, her offspring, Jewish people, but especially those who keep the commandments and the testimony of Jesus in Revelation 12, 17. So while he's going in general against the offspring of the woman, which is all the Jewish people in this particularly those who keep the destiny of Jesus, which we would refer to as the Messianic Jews, the Jews who believe in Jesus. That's the target, those who are keeping the testimony of Jesus. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. yeah, so when it says in verse 7 of Daniel 11, when the power of the people has been completely shattered, so what the way is actually the holy people, what's the power? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so this is the same uh, reference, the same thing that um, the people, the holy people, referring to the Jews or we would say more specifically to the Jewish believers, right? That these are the holy people. And Jesus uses the word, the elect. So the elect in, in Matthew 24, the elect. So these are people who believe. So here he's referring to the holy people. Their power has been completely shattered. I mean, they are fully oppressed and suppressed and troubled and attacked, right? So it's almost it almost like they're helpless. Now, God has not given up on his people. It's just that during that three and a half years, he has he's letting this Antichrist do all these things, speak blasphemies, demand to be worshipped, attacking those who have the testimony of Jesus. Demanding that people receive the mark of the beast, demanding that people worship the image of the beast, and if they don't, they will be killed. So the holy people, specifically referring to those who believe in Jesus, they completely shattered. Meaning, look, it almost seems like they are hopeless, but they are dying as martyrs for Jesus. And in fact, we will see when we go through the book of Revelation, Revelation 14. There are four angels making announcement, and one angel says, don't receive the mark of the beast. Another angel says, it's better to die than to receive the mark of the beast. Meaning, it's okay. Love not your life unto death. It's okay. Die, but don't receive the mark of the beast. That's the message. So that's it. what's happening here. Now they're completely sad. Uh, especially this is the three and a half years, it's going to be like that. Yeah, and uh, is there like there will be a time where God will be divinely protected from Israel and he pointed out to Revelation 13. And when we see uh, chapter 13, verse 14, it says, uh, where she is coming for a time, he means that half a time. So basically, we need a half year. And I think that the population is for seven years. It references to which three and a half years like that they are going to be protected. Yeah, so this is the second three and a half years. Okay. So the second three and a half years that we mentioned, it is what is also referred to as the Great Tribulation or the time of Jacob's trouble. So the second three and a half years is worse than the first because the first three and a half years, he comes as a man of peace, he is bringing peace, all of that. But in the middle, he's going to change. And, you know, and he's going to be very, you know, he's, set him, he's going to set himself up as God and he's going to attack uh, believers very, very, very. So this Revelation 12 is the second three and a half years. Uh, 
uh, and also uh, there is a thing that says where the people go to and the knowledge shall be increased. Uh, so they always like how how do you come to know that you to and traveling is there any evidence? Because we always uh, interpret scripture into other scripture. So how how you say that to and flow it talks about uh, traveling. Mm. Yeah. So uh, we don't have a then yeah, I don't I can't think of a parallel scripture to Daniel 12.4. Um, but when it says many shall run to and fro, uh, the I would say the common understanding of it is that it refers to people moving uh, place to place. That's why we I, I just used, you know, we just use the word travel. Uh, but it's just that there's so much of moving of people from place to place, run to and fro. And knowledge shall increase. Uh, there's going to be an increase of information. We don't have a parallel scripture as far as I can, as far as I know, that repeats this this thing or this. So it's kind of unique to Daniel 12, verse 4. Um, what we do know is, uh, uh, in, a, in a different context, Paul did write to Timothy, saying that there will be the you know, doctrines of demons. That's more referring to teaching. That is, this is in First Timothy four, verse one, that there's going to be deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. You know, I mean, lot all kinds of teaching that's empowered by demonic. But it's not the same as Daniel twelve four, where He's talking about people going place to place and increase in information. So, to my, uh, as far as I know, there's no parallel scripture or parallel text to this. Okay. All right. So um, we'll close for today. I'll just uh, mention a few words for next week. So from next week, we will start through the book of Revelation uh, from chapter one, and go through Revelation verse by verse, and we will connect back to both the book of Daniel as well as other texts, like we will be yeah, we will connect back to Zechariah, Joel, and Ezekiel, you know, this other text, and Isaiah. So as we go through the book of Revelation, I start journeying through it, we'll connect back to Old Testament scripture and say, hey, this is where we see the parallel text or text being fulfilled. Or, I mean, the same thing being said as was spoken by Isaiah or Zechariah or Joel and so on. We'll do that, okay? Uh, uh, so we'll get into Revelation next week, and please feel free uh, anytime. Uh, if you have questions on Daniel, you can ask. I'd encourage you to you know, read it through, your, uh, through yourself and uh, and see if you can explain it to yourself. If you can explain it to yourself, that means you really understood it. Uh, you can explain it to other people. Uh, so try to do that. Uh, the PDF notes are there, so you can always refer to it. And um, and we will begin Revelation. The book of Revelation next week. Okay. Thank you so much. Could somebody please pray and we will close after that. Father, we thank you for this wonderful session that we've been having for the last two hours. Lord, we've been with the pastor trying teaching us to diagnose through the book of Daniel. So Lord, we thank you for the for the wisdom, the skill, the knowledge, this, and everything that you've provided to him, Lord. We pray that you give, you keep blessing him and anointing him, Lord. I also do pray for ourselves, the students. Let us not be just the hearers, but also the doers of the word. Let us learn also 
to do understand the book of Daniel and that of Revelation by our soul so that we can also be able to interpret for those who will come to us with the help of the Holy Spirit as we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day. See you again next week. Bye.